Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. My name is Jake Scanlon. I'm the lead educator here at the Academy and this is a place that we delve into anything about Bitcoin and everything about Bitcoin, starting with the fundamentals. And the fundamentals of Bitcoin, like any religious scripture or scientific text, it's either a big bang or a let there be light. It all starts with energy. And today's topic, we're going to go through just all the different layers of the networks, the commodities and how they connect. Really straightforward. We produce energy in the energy sector, such as solar, which produces electricity. And everyone might be familiar with kilowatt hours. Typically in the industrial scale, they do it in megawatt hours, which is a thousand times more in quantity size. And where is all this electricity going? It's going to society. Everything lives, breathes, depends on energy. And well, when there is a power cut, uh, you very much get reminded how everyone is dependent on electricity. And all that excess electricity in the system, what do we do with it? Or wasted energy on and off the grid? Well, this is where Bitcoin miners step in. It's just a computer that converts electricity into a form of compute power, which adds Bitcoin blocks to the chain. In a sense, you can collapse this whole thing to, it's a computer that converts electricity into a quantity of digital money, but we'll get there. So Bitcoin miners also produce heat. And so you've got producer and consumer on the electrical grid. On the internet side of things, that conversion of energy into compute power, the hashing rate in which the, the miner is producing a certain amount of calculations per second to find the next block in the chain. And this is where the internet connection part comes in. A Bitcoin mining hardware unit, it just needs an internet connection and uh, well, power, electrical grid. And so the internet side of things is there is a whole Bitcoin network of nodes and they all store the information of the entire Bitcoin blockchain. And every block is a certain amount of data and that data is the Bitcoin, the, the money of the, of the whole network. And the money only moves um, when the transaction information is updated. To, to move some Bitcoin from one wallet to another, you need a certain amount of data storage in a block. And so all of the different people on the Bitcoin network are paying to store their transaction information in a block and they pay fees. So you get the fees and you get some subsidy, which is freshly issued Bitcoin. And that's what the miners are spending all this time and energy consuming electricity to produce Bitcoin at a greater quantity. And that's their margin, that's their business. And the hash rate in, in of itself is the bridge between the two worlds of the electricity grid and a global monetary asset. The, the ability to wirelessly transmit energy from the physical world onto the internet. And that's what makes Bitcoin unique, that you've got all of these other digital assets with CEOs and marketing teams and, and all these sorts of pieces. Bitcoin doesn't. Bitcoin has started with a person that developed the code, Satoshi Nakamoto, plugged in his computer to produce Bitcoin blocks and earn the Bitcoin. It's a form of money, data money, units on a database of blocks that has a cost to produce derived from electricity. And the, the, the going trend for many people is the belief that Bitcoin is going to be the money of the future. And what we need is a form of money that is digital, but has a cost to produce. So the incentives for Bitcoin miners is to go and produce as much computers and electricity as possible. And in that process, they build out more electricity capacity for society and for the Bitcoin network and uh, better computers builds out, well, more, more faster, cheaper, more efficient chips. And so we get a playing field of cheaper energy and cheaper chips. And that's exactly what everyone wants. We want computers and devices and robotics and we want and it all runs on energy and all our production costs energy when you drive in your car energy you fly uh, the majority of your your ticket is the the cost of the fuel and so all of these different pieces of the energy side and the compute technology side of bitcoin network are continually expanding under 21 million units so you've got the electricity being transferred into compute power onto the internet which is adding bitcoin blocks uh, and the Bitcoin network is a, an entire pool of people that all keep a copy of that same transaction file, the blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain, a file system of units of money that have a cost in energy to produce. So you've got all this combination 
of uh, watts, bits, and sats, as it boils down to. Uh, data money, Bitcoin. And uh, I think I'll leave it there. If anyone has any questions, queries, thoughts, um, the modules uh, of the Hash Power Academy are structured to learn about grids and electricity, hardware and the heat that they produce, valuable for, well, greenhouses, pools, schools, anything. Over 50% of our, our energy needs globally is heat. So there's all these other different directions that the Bitcoin network is going into. Hashrate has all these different cybersecurity applications as well, um, SHA-256, and all these different other pieces of the blockchain, well, there's other different uh, types. It's not just waiting every 10 minutes to send some Bitcoin. There's new layers being built, such as Liquid and Lightning. Those are the core two. There's other ones coming along too. And the Bitcoin network, a, an entire group of all different nodes that keep track of all of this information, which has a cost to produce in energy. And so you've got decentralization of the data storage and you've got decentralization of um, the issuance power. Hash rate in the middle is, uh, is what we replace central bankers for with decentralized bankers. Dis di distributing the issuance power of the money, not from one central place, but all across the planet to those who are most efficient with their energy and compute technologies. And so the, the pioneers of who makes the best energy, uh, well, whoever creates the most energy abundance and technology abundance in our world will be paid the most. It's meritocracy in its purest form. And even if aliens came along and had better energy and technology, they could produce Bitcoin and then use the Bitcoin to purchase all our commodities of energy and technology. Um, well, if they had better technology at that point, it probably wouldn't be the case, but nevertheless, I think this is the end of the video. I hope this was an interesting, insightful way of seeing the Bitcoin network through all its different layers, its different chakras. Um, yeah, so uh, hope to see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, send it to the group chat, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.